analog comparator variable strength whatever you want to call it signals they're useful for a lot of things but they can't be transported quickly because they have to go through comparators obviously if you want to go fast you do something more like this right side where you speed up the signal by spacing out the comparators if you aren't doing the full 0 through 15 signal you do have the op option to do something like this 0 through 9 decimal system the signal decays by 5, inverts, decays by 5, inverts, decays by 5. So by just decaying like the top and bottom of the 15, you keep the 10 unique signals that don't get over or underflowed. There's still a delay and you're using a lot of dust, but for decimal systems, this is still pretty useful. What would be nice if we could use dustless instant instawire. But this only sends pulses, not signals. So what I've done is by using multiple pulses, I can send an analog signal. It sends an initial pulse, then after a variable amount of time, another pulse. This copies the analog state. To operate, just set this pink analog line and then press this button. This it's InstaWire, so it isn't idiot proof, but as long as you don't press the button while this lamp is active, you should be fine. It even works for zero. After two quick pulses, all these lamps turn off. And you might be able to start seeing how this works. What it uses is decayers. The stronger the input signal strength, the longer that the, this will decay for. So, when I press this button, it first pulls back this redstone block, which toggles the state of these rails, which sends an insta pulse. It also allows this pink signal strength to go into the decayer, and when the decayer is finished decaying, it hits zero, and this observer is pulled back which toggles the position of this red block, which sends another insta pulse. This repeater right here is just used for the zero signal strength case. Over here, this observer right here stores the state of either getting ready for the initial pulse or getting ready for the second pulse. It should always be here, but because of InstaWire things can kind of be fragile. If you mess with that, this parity might be broken. Just make sure that it starts out over here. So when the initial pulse comes, the observer moves over here and sends 15 to this decayer. Then when the next pulse comes along, it goes over here and does two things simultaneously. It resets the state of this memory and puts 15 into here so it can send this current state of this decayer into the memory. And this is all seamless, so when this happens, like going from 10 to 5 or something, this strength will always stay on. No gaps. So just an overview of how this works. If there's signal strength like 3 over here, it'll send 3 into here, decay very quickly, and then send another pulse. These two pulses only allow enough time for this 15 to go down to 12. And then when this 15 goes into this side of the subtracting comparator, 15 minus 12 equals three, and that'll go into here. Very nice. To build this, all these designs are pretty flat, so I'm just gonna go in a position for you to pause. For this, remember to get this green circuit. You can also use this green circuit as a signal that a new signal strength has been received or any new any signal strength has been received. If you don't know how to build this InstaWire, it's pretty easy. You don't need to use glass, just any sticky pistonable block. I hope you found this useful. And if you found this video interesting, you'll probably enjoy my other content in future videos. Speaking of subscribing, thanks for 1.5 million views and 3,000 subscribers.